picturing now. Pretty exciting. I uh, did a bit of rock, uh, snow on and a crack of thunder is not really held. And it's windy as you can see, so it's pretty wet, so yeah, glad to get here. Well, this is my palace for the night. I thought there was a winter room here, but uh, unfortunately not. So as you can see, this is the uh, the end of the uh, chairlift actually and uh, so at least it's dry if not warm and I've got soaking wet things but at least it stopped raining and uh, managed to get there's a tap outside so I can get some water which is great um, not sure if I can drink it but well give it a go so you can see my things drying on the chairlift wire very good and there's the chairlift outside now it's stopped raining it's quite nice So this is the sum total of my tea, which is um, bread from breakfast with a bit of butter on, that's it, and uh, a bit of malt loaf after having nothing but bars today. Hmm. Well, this was a interesting via ferrata. As you can see, it's dank and uh, it's quite steep. And up there up to the top of Razor. And uh, my gloves with the wet wire just wouldn't grip at all. I, I just couldn't grip the, the rope, the uh, wire, so it was quite exciting. I was glad I had the kit on. Uh, well, here I am in my bivvy. It's quite cosy in here, actually. It's in the cloud in a alpine sort of pasture with cows outside, but I'm actually sort of camping outside somebody's house in the garden, but there's nobody here, so don't think they're going to mind. Anyway, there's cow pats here, so uh, I'm going to leave less than the cows. Um, hard day, again. Rain virtually all day. Um, I've had 11 hours from quarter to nine to quarter to eight. Um, rained pretty hard in the afternoon. I was absolutely knackered later on, but <laughs> the most notable thing was when I came into contact with civilization, the contrast between me sort of absolutely soaked Everything just streaming with water, um, probably a bit smelly. And then when I went into this shop at the border with Austria and Slovenia, there are like, you know, just people perfectly presented with their perfume and stuff on. And then there was me. I just felt so out of place. I was just keen to get back on the mountain. And it was a bit like that coming into the next town. I just couldn't find anywhere to eat, and um, which was a bit of a disappointment. And um, all I could do was go to a garage, couldn't find any gas, so just had this rather uh, self-service cup of um, hot chocolate and a rather insipid sandwich which I took up the hill and that was my tea with Angel Delight. Um, so uh, And then it poured with rain, so it was a pretty testing end to the day, but now I'm happy enough here. I've got a... Cough, a cough and a, a sore throat. It's, it's got to be from just being, you know, soaked to the skin a few times and just having to stick it out. I think it's one of the things about going lightweight is that I can't afford to put my jumper on um, when I feel a bit cold because I don't want to get that wet. I've got to keep it nice and dry. But uh, anyway, all's well that ends well. Well, it's five o'clock in the morning. Cold and miserable outside. It was pretty cold in here. I woke up with the cold. Uh, it's, everything's damp. It's still raining in the night. A bit of wind. Uh, still cloudy, can't see anything. And I've got to say, the prospect of a 27 mile walk currently doesn't seem very appealing. Well, I've got to this nice sunny spot. The only thing is. The hut that I was told was open is shut and I've been going 12 hours, I've took about 2 hours sleep and done almost 40k but I've got to go over there another hill to get to another place and hopefully that'll have somewhere. I'm shattered. I'm jolting under a tree because I've been bombarded or I was by the biggest hailstones I've ever come across. It actually was really hurting my head and just 
could hardly, no, I had to get under a tree. Desperate. See down here, there's the hailstones. Absolutely enormous. Well, you can see what it's like this morning, it's snowing. Top of the Colin Kofel. And I was gonna go over there, but route finding looks really dodgy. It looks, there's no marks, there's, looks really scrappy and treacherous. So I think I'll give that a miss. Sometimes discretion does play the better part of valour. Well, I carried on actually. It's not quite as bad as it looks, but it's really intimidating uh, sort of place. Bit of an echo here. That's where I'm going, up the Kalashpitsa. It's uh, not snowed any harder anyway. It's quite hard to find the way at times. So here I go. Here I am on top of the Kellerspitzen and that was uh, quite an intimidating climb up. It wasn't that difficult actually, apart from avoiding where the bits of hard snow had covered the route. And that was the most difficult bit and it's also very loose and of course it's snowing. But uh, yeah, glad to be here. Now all I've got to do is get down. So as you can see the weather has not improved. In fact it's pretty manky. Sleet and snow. Yuck. Well, this is something else. We're uh, on the Via Ferrata and see the chain and then up there I have to go into that hole which is an old wartime tunnel. So that was the exit from the tunnel. Now I'm going up the wire up a ladder up here. So let's go. Good view, just coming up. It's right in and over there. God, it is dark. Could definitely do with a torch. It is dark. Go switch this off. These two people are a bit more sensible that brought torches up here. I couldn't see anything at all. I forgot I didn't bring a torch. Well, it's coming up 10 o'clock. Uh, it took me 11 and a half hours to get here. It's a tiny little bivvy in a circle. I'll be just sleeping on the floor. There's no water, but I had my meal on the way up. It was absolutely knackering today hot in the 30s a uh, rucksack was far too heavy and I just laboured lost the path a couple of times in the forest it wasn't well way marked uh, 2700 meters of ascent to get here so nearly all in one go which is in that heat was hard amazing um, on the summit ridge to get here in the evening lovely light Makes it all worthwhile, but I'm ready for bed. Listen to that. After the travails of yesterday, this is just pure heaven. So for me, this right now is what it's all about. It's a lovely wild place, nobody around, wonderful flowers coming up, the streams just flowing out of the snow, animals around, the young deer and, and other things, the flowers are incredible, sun's still shining at 7 o'clock and I've got the privilege of sleeping here, what a place. This is the view from my bivvy. I'm literally uh, lying on a pile of stones. I stopped before the, the bit of snow because you get a cold effect, a cold draft coming down from the snow. So I stopped before that. I'm about 300 meters below the mountain, about 
three one fifty meters I think here. So I'm expected to be quite cold, but at the moment it feels pretty warm. This is an incredibly uh, primeval landscape. It's obviously recently come from under glaciation and all the rocks are just splitting with the frost and just boulders everywhere. That's the old deserted hut up there, the Desio. It does look desolate. And then we come round towards the ridge of Disgrazia, which means mountain peril. This ridge has been absolutely brilliant. A bit of knife edge here, look into the mist, but actually the bit above that I've just come back down, superb rock, pinnacles everything. Come from, I'm coming down, you can hear the thunder on the mountain of peril, Disgrazia. Up there, but uh, it's pretty dark over there. I think there's a big storm coming, and I'm going to get wet and hailed on. I suspect. Tell you what, my hair's standing on end, so I think I'm going to uh, have a shelter in the disused hut. This looks like it's brewing into a big one. Not nice. Whoa, I tell you this is pretty spooky. It's a big storm, I'm just behind the old hut and the hail's bashing on the roof. And here it comes. Whoa. Love him sitting here. This is a bit of shelter. Ah. Well, it's a fairly desperate place for sheep. Not much grass, is there, sheep? No wonder you're looking at me. Oh, it's an incredible place, this. It's just got slabs and rock all the way around. And this is just one little bit of it. So I've just come down from a climb, I've had a bit of lunch, an excellent climb up the Bassadino, which is on the border of Italy and Switzerland, come at it from the Swiss side. Um, normal route goes up a glacier, it's a bit of a plod, but I approached it from the hut I was at, um, they didn't really give me much information, so I had to make it up myself, which is full of the spirit of exploration that I'd hoped for, no guidebooks, just have a look, decide which way to go. So there's the uh, peak up there, and you can see the slab line coming down to the right. Great route. This, in my opinion, is how to do huts. This is the Capanna Efra, and uh, here we are outside, and I'll take you on a little tour. It's the nice table made out of a stone slab. So we come in the main entrance. That's the dining table. Slippers available, wood burner, kitchen, and well stocked, there's a little bar, and in this cupboard we have food which you can buy with different prices on, and uh, everything really well equipped here, and of course uh, toilet and running water. But what a great system based on honesty. So this is where I've been um, staying the night. It's another slightly sort of spooky abandoned hut. Uh, I only got here at quarter past nine. Um, but the, of course the good thing is when you wake up there's the dawn. This is really technical ground with a big rucksack down here. I've got some chains but it's going to take a while. Really awkward. The rucksack throws you off balance a bit. And uh, it's just slippy, and on the snow my shoes are just all over the place. All the um, studs are gone. So before I throw these shoes away, I thought I'd do a comparison to show how they worn. So this is a nice brand new shoe. See the tread on there. 
nice and new. This is the old one. See it's got a nice hole in the toe. Been there for a long time. Not a large red. Absolutely bare there. Not much elsewhere. Finally I've made it up a proper glaciated peak. It took me 46 days but I've got it. So I'm on top of the Grand Motte and I had a warning from a guide on the way up to be careful because I was so late but uh, it's fine actually. It's about caught to two so he was very nice about it so uh, that was fine. So we can see the Grand Cass behind. Yeah, enjoyed it. So this is Monte Viso. This is my last major summit in the Alps and you can see every major peak in the Alps from Monte Viso. Um, so I can see Monte Rosa over there but I can't see as far as Slovenia and uh, I've got nine days and I'll be in Monaco. Well, what a truly stunning view and this is such a peaceful place to bivy and again I feel such a privilege to be here uh, to be able to have my dinner here to just relax and then go to sleep and uh, what a view amazing couldn't be better Well, I'm in my bivy. It's right in the middle of the night. It's about three o'clock in the morning. I'm afraid I've had uh, stomach problems. Uh, one of the hazards of a trip, I think. So I can't sleep. Uh, I'm going to be wrecked in them when I get up. Um, stars are right overhead, though. All around. It's one of the special things. There's no wind. And just staring up at the heavens is really special. So even when you're not feeling well, it can be a real special experience. Well, this is my last summit, the Cima de Resto, for a drop down to the Mediterranean at Montan. Uh, so no more up, just one last downhill section and that's it. This is it, the end, 63 days and don't know how many kilometres, maybe 1800 and I'm in the nice warm water of the Mediterranean. Feels great to finish, I must say, and it's a good place to finish, down by the beach, in the water, what could be better than that?